In this tutorial, we're going to look at what is called as named queries. Um, it's usually best practice to uh, consolidate all the application queries in one particular place. And uh, even if you're using a simple JDBC connection, it's, a, it's actually a good idea to have one common place where all the queries that you use in the application are consolidated because if you want to make any changes, you know where to go and make the change. If uh, the queries are you know, everywhere in the application, then it becomes very hard to maintain. Now, name queries is a way in which we can uh, consolidate all the queries in a particular place, and uh, it makes it easy to organize the queries, and uh, it, it makes it easier to maintain as well. We will have a look at what name queries are. Uh, name queries allows you to write the queries at the entity level. So say, for example, I have this user details uh, class here. Now I can, list out all the common queries that uh, I would use for this user details entity. And uh, I can refer these queries anywhere in the application. So that makes it a good uh, way of consolidating all the user related queries in the user entity class itself. So the way I write name queries is by using the at named query. So this is the annotation that helps us to write name queries. This I'm writing this below the entity annotation. Now I'll import this from javax.persistence. And uh, inside this, I will write the name query. So this requires two parameters. One is the name of the query. And then the second parameter is the query itself. So I will give this name as you. Okay, I need to keep the name here name equals I'll give the name as user details dot by ID uh, the reason I'm giving this name is I want the query to be a query where I can supply an ID and get the user details object so the query will be from user details where user ID equals question mark. Now again, I'm having a parameter here. I don't want to fart code the parameter. Of course, we know that uh, this is a runtime thing. We might get a uh, value in a variable and you want to substitute that here. But in essence, this query gets me the user object where I'm supplying the user ID. And that's the reason why the name I'm giving is user details start by ID. Again, uh, it's a good practice to have the user details name here. So the entity name dot, the, the query name is what I'm gonna use. And uh, it's a good practice to have the entity name in front of the named query so that it's easy to identify what we are trying to do. So say I'm having uh, an address entity, it could be address dot by id so that way i can uh, identify what the query actually does so now that i have defined this named query here let me save this uh, now what i'll do is in my um, in my test class i'm not going to do a session dot create query and i'm not going to have a string here what i'll do instead is i will call another method of the session object this is called session dot get named query now the session dot get named query takes a string argument and this is actually the name of the query itself so it's going to be this one okay so i have got the named query i have to substitute the parameter because this name query has a placeholder parameter. Note that this can be both ways, it can be a positional parameter or a named parameter, either, either can be used. So I will use query dot set integer zero. I'm just gonna hard code the value here just to test that it works fine. And I'm gonna pass the ID as two. So it will have to return me 
the user one I'm sorry user two okay let's run this okay user two is returned perfect there is one more advantage of using uh, a named query which is that you know here I have actually written a HQL query so this is actually a pure HQL query now what I can do is I can actually write plain SQL queries native SQL queries and that can still execute so what I'm doing is I'm gonna write a select star from table name I'm not gonna use uh, HQL I'm not gonna talk about classes and properties I can use native SQL and I can write about table names and column names and I can execute the query in order to demonstrate just this what I did was I have um, changed the table name here it's user underscore details and uh, the class name is user details so we'll see how it works when I'm querying the table directly now the way I specify a named native query is by using an annotation call at named native query now I'll have to import this from Java X persistence. Now again, this annotation takes the parameters name and query. So let me give the parameter user details dot. Let me give a by name. I want to query by name this time. So I'll enter the query as now this time it's a pure native SQL query so I will not be referring object names I will be referring the table name I will not be referring uh, field names I'll be referring column names and I will not start the query with a from I will have to start with a select star from so it's it's the entire SQL query select star from user underscore details which is the table name it's not user details where username equals just verify that that's the name of the column yeah the name of the column is username okay I'll again put a placeholder for this it works similarly for uh, a named native query as well Okay, so I've defined the, the native query here. Now one additional thing I can do here is specify the result class name. Now, why would I want to do that? If it is a named query, I'm talking in uh, HQL language and uh, I know what is the class in which the list of results is going to be. I'm uh, doing a select from user details. The class name is already available here. But when I'm writing a native SQL query, uh, Hibernate will not know what um, what object the results need to be in. So I can specify a class name here so that Hibernate knows what object to cast the result as. So what I'll do is I'll use this property result class equals now I'll give the class name, so which was user details. This should be the class name, not the string. Okay, so now we have defined this name native query. Let's save. And uh, again, we can use this native query in our session. So what I'll do is I'll use the same method but uh, instead of using this named query I'm going to use this name native query so just copy this name and paste it here so the other change that I need to do is since the parameter is a string in this case so I will need to do a query dot set string I'll again hard code a value here just to test save this 
Okay, now let's run this and see what happens. There you go, user ten has come up, but note that this time we have specified the whole SQL query ourselves. We do not rely on Hibernate to generate the query for us depending on the objects and the properties that we mentioned. We have directly entered the SQL query itself and that's what runs. So the advantage here is that say you have a stored procedure that you need to run, you can uh, you can use this you can use this option and run the stored procedure. Uh, but still, um, it's always recommended to go for the uh, HQL option because uh, you know the whole point of using Hibernate is to go away from uh, SQL and querying and all that. Um, HQL is a good alternative, and uh, you would want to use name NATO query only when you do not have an option and you have to run uh, queries directly. A result class is optional, but uh, if you specify a result class, the object that you're going to get is the object of the class that you've mentioned here. So um, that's why this works fine. I'm casting this as a list of user details. And this is a list of user details because uh, I specified the result object to be of the user details type. So this is a, this is a look at um, name queries. In my next tutorial, we're going to look at another way to uh, query uh, objects in Hibernate. And that's by using the Criteria API.